10 standalone verticals, you can replace that with two palletized horizontals. So let's head on over to this other machine here. But as we're walking, um, because you are so versed in horizontal machining centers, the first things that pop into my head are the route that the coolant goes, the route that the chip goes, allowing us to maybe do coolant flushes or chip flushes a little bit easier, which oftentimes allow longer tool life and a better finish on the part, maybe less secondary operations. Also, the pallet change system that allows for that automation, even if it's just a one around, you know, 360 degrees. Are there any parts that I've left out because you are so versed for anyone who's learning about horizontal horizontal machining. Oh yeah, so the biggest piece of it is how many parts can I get up on that tombstone? Yeah. So let's just say I can get up 20 parts on that tombstone. I size the machine appropriately. I've got the right size parts. I got a way to hold 20 parts. I put those 20 parts up on machine. Every time I do a single tool change in that machine, I'm machining 20 parts with that tool. If I was making that in a vertical, maybe I get one, maybe I get two. So as you start to look at the tool change time and divide it by 20, Every time you make a part in a horizontal machining center, that's really where you get your savings. So that's, and then of course, everything that comes with it, can I get my chips out? You know, cause I'm making so many of them uh, cause you're machining a little bit more efficiently. But yeah, we always talk about uh, part density in the horizontal platform. And that's something that even though you might see it if you run a cycle time, that's just something that conceptually doesn't necessarily always hit home or make sense when you say it for the very first time in front of customers. One of my favorite things about working with machine monitoring companies as well is because theoretically we know everything you just said to be true, but when we actually see the math of what's happening, right. we go, oh my gosh, Oh yeah, Graham's been right all along. Right. I need four more machines. Well, and, and so we look at it and actually so how the math generally works out is if you have 10 standalone verticals, and we love verticals, we, we have verticals too, but if you have 10 standalone verticals, you can replace that with two palletized horizontals. And it's almost every time we get into that situation, and sure, it might be eight or it might be 12, and sometimes it's 20. You, I mean, you never know until you really dive into it to find out what, you know, that pain point has been, but always more efficient and that, you know, more parts up is really core to that whole concept. Yeah, I've heard similar ideas, 10 to one, 10 to yeah, two, that yep. type of thing. Right. I see it all the time when it comes to quotes from the sales guys, and you guys do a wonderful job of allowing someone to understand that information, knowing that they can get as much, if not more work out by condensing. And again, we go back to the real estate space. So as we're doing that, wow. I mean, wow, what kind of a cutting tool oh, is sure. in this yep. bad boy? Okay, so uh, basically we're looking at our uh, 635 axis here. So this is a uh, titanium aerospace structural machine uh, with the way that it's spec'd out. You can get it with an 8,000 RPM spindle or a 15,000 RPM spindle. But the tool itself that we have on there is actually an ISCAR uh, cutter that we're looking to uh, hog some material out with. So really looking forward to uh, making it rain. And when people come to visit this event on September 14th and 15th, will this thing be making it rain or we have another demo running for that? We'll have a separate demo running for that one. But yeah, we'll be getting closer at that point. If I ask really nicely, maybe even go on my knees and say, can you machine something for me and see those ships fly? You think you could talk someone into doing it? I think we could make that happen maybe somewhere around like the Wednesday before the show. <laughs> maybe if you just happen to be able to swing by. I like it, Graham. We're definitely setting you up on purpose for that because I do think I'm coming by on that <laughs> Wednesday. It's gonna be working with uh, all of your dealers, distributors, of all of your partners. Of so I think that's a good day to come by. Maybe shoot some more video so the audience can see what's going on and who you work with around the country. Yeah, it's great. So I mean, it, it, for us, it'll be our distributor day before the show, but we'll have people that I know you've worked with before in the past. Uh, Selway will be out here. Love uh, those guys. Right, right. We'll have, uh, you know, Merrifield Machinery. Love we'll be those out guys. Here, as well as all of the rest of our distributors as well. So those are just a couple of the recent ones. I know I've seen some content out there in the uh, in the industry. Yeah, well, you have a great network of partners for sure.